telling you, the negative energy here on Kensington is overwhelming. Uh, unmatchable anywhere else in the world. It just feels real negative, real raw, real dangerous. And I never say that. It feels like at any moment. At all. Things could go. Philadelphia. I'm officially here. I am in downtown Philadelphia. Uh, unfortunately, Kensington is famous for drugs and zombies. Possibly the scariest looking place on planet Earth. The percentage of drug addicts is gonna become overwhelming. This is my first time here, uh, but for years and years I've seen videos of Kensington. So I know what to expect. And the game plan today is to show you guys Kensington, Philadelphia. Kensington seems to be a place that locals avoid, uh, but crazy YouTubers like myself are attracted to the danger. It's a very sad sight. There's nothing here to laugh about. These people are, they need help. I'm gonna find somewhere safe to park my car. Uh, you know, there's writing all over the side about my YouTube channel, so some might believe there's camera equipment, even though there's not, and I don't wanna have the car broken into. So I'm gonna try to park a little distance away and walk back. Yeah. Lost my house, trashed my car, and got evicted all in fucking four months, bro. So and that's the reason to get back into drugs? No, the reason was the fuck I'm homeless, and it's like, yeah. hey, let me smoke some crack before I go around here and shoot the fucking house up and kill everybody in the motherfucker. The yeah. girl, too. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not doing that. So I, you know, I'm homeless. I get high. My addict, when I've got problems, I addict, yeah. Tell me a story about Kensington. I mean, you know, it's just what it is. They call it Killing Alley. I used to hear about it when my brother used to. What? Run. Sorry, say again. What they call it? Killing Alley. We used to call it Killing Alley before they said Kensington and uh, you know Kensington and Allegheny and all that, or you know down here Canaan. They called it Killing Alley because there used to be a lot of murders. Jerry's Corners used to be. You couldn't sell drugs like they sell drugs now. Yeah. You would, it'd be a block, and that's it. A whole strip. Everything be locked up and loaded. Mafia. But it must be very competitive right now for the sellers. I mean, they don't care, man. Yeah. These young boys just want some sneakers and sell their little bundle and get their little bitch. They don't care. But it's got to be crazy dangerous for them as well. I mean, yeah, when you got a set right here, then yeah. the Chinese stores are set, then yeah. the trash cans are set, then the yeah. homeless man with the tents is set. Like, you know, they get along, but ain't that many shoes as you would think with people selling different coke or, or their own shit differently yeah. right next to each other. And it's just like the weirdest thing. I thought about that myself. I said, damn, I'm not going to ain't that bad, but when it's, when it's a shoot out here, yeah. Happens. When's the last time you remember a, a shootout here? Oh uh, man, the other day down West Philly, somebody tried to pull a gun out of me. Yeah. For pumping gas. Anyway, but um, I had shots every night. Bro. I didn't know you shots. It doesn't it, phase you at all. It's, I mean, it's like new. I said, I've been shot six times, bro. Like yeah. I've been guns. Six times at the same time? Yes. Guns yeah. been pulled on me within the last month, at least thirty fucking times. Yeah. At least thirty times and, somebody been acting like. And the reason to, to try to rob you? Either try to rob me or, pu or pump me, or I'm making too much money faster than I'm pumping gas or panhandling, or yeah. I'm just making too many moves with people that see me. They're like, yo, get a boy to sell us from a seller for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's how it go. You know what I mean? But first we mad, just they start talking more than you know, arguing, talking, and then when they do like that, it's like, damn, you know, I, the whole another face come up, like. Yeah. Either put that up or do what you gotta do, like, cause I ain't playing no games with you now. Yeah. And a lot of times with, with my spirituality and what I, you know, what I go through, I, like I said, I did a lot of that earlier on in age. I'm 52. I told my daughter, I never carry a gun or shoot a gun at somebody. Got. If I get killed because somebody killed me and I ain't do too much wrong, I'm not aggressive yeah. with a firearm. I don't need no more black on black crime. I don't need me going to jail at 52 and getting out at 75. Yeah. I don't need it. Have you done jail time? Nah, that's what I'm thinking about me. Crazy. I was blessed not to go to jail. All my brothers went to jail my whole life. And how many years have you been on this street, in and out, um, Kensington? Ten years, and then now this is about a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. I like it down here. So Man, crazy. come on, you can't tell me you listen, like it down listen. here. When I'm homeless and I'm yeah. in addiction, yeah. I fucking this like it down here because I get yeah. high all day. I get money all day. Yeah. Not a lot of money, but money just to get by. Survive. Like, they survive with homeless man money like I can get me something. Yeah. 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 And, and the addiction is crack. Yeah, I'd rather cope than any, any kind of fucking, you know, 
Some of them had me down. I used to take a lot of pills. Some of them bopper used to take the Clonopin, the Xanny, the Adderall, the Adderall, the Adderall. Yeah. I had a script so fucking long when I was fucking, what, 21 years old. I should have killed Thorazine, Depakol, Seroquel, Lithium. Yeah. Like big pills. Like to keep me calm. That's why I'm hyper. It's not because I'm high now, because I ain't. I've been doing this. Yeah. I'm just bopper. You know, but at the same time, like you pick what you do out here and you learn about yourself and you. No, I'm not a, a dumb dude. I know what I'm doing. That's what I tell you. If I'm doing something, I'm doing that. Yeah. If I'm getting high, then I'm getting. I'm not gonna get high and act like I'm not getting high. Yeah. Full, full fledged. Yeah. And when I get my shit together, I got a brand new dollar, twenty dollars bill. You're like, damn, who that? And you're from here. You're from Philly. Yeah, I'm from Philly. Born in Westfield. And, right and prior to all this, how I, were you in school? I graduated. graduated yeah. School. I mean, I did fair. I mean, I got an A in physics. Come on. I nah, mean, you sound like a smart man. That's why I question. I like I like learning stuff, man. I'm trying to go to school now, man. I would learn without have to worry about paying or if I passed or fell or not. That's what the world should start doing. Man, this is saturated. There's so many drug it's problems like, on the street. The drugs and the homelessness, the, the, the violence and the, the temperament, it's all not even from slavery or from prohibition ages or, or the mafia ages and all that gangster shit back in the day, yeah. but from post-traumatic stress just from now, from having to come outside and see this shit, see the news, see fucking... To see your own selves doing our deviance. Yeah. Whatever it is each person has that they got to deal with. That's a both traumatic stress in itself. Then you got a wise enough person to see the whole world and see how society is and see how politics is. I mean, it's a fucking game show. Yeah. It's fucking, fucking Monty Hall. Like, you know, after a while you want to be like that, man. See before. And that's why I lost a lot of my motivation. Yeah. And that's what led to my relapse before I relapsed. I was telling my mom, I was like, I wind up just getting a tank going to Kansas. I'm tired of paying for this car. I'm tired of going to work. I'm tired of people talking shit about it. But tell me, me. How, how crazy crazy does it get at nighttime here? I mean, like I said, the freaks come out at night. Like, yeah. once you get so used to it, it's just like, fun. It's like a video game. When you're in it, it's like, all right, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And you, you keep yourself safe. Like, I know what I'm doing. I'm not selling drugs. I'm not carrying no firearms. I'm just hustling shit like this. Yeah. Paying him. That ain't nothing. And I'm still getting my ass kicked for that. Like, damn, yeah. what the fuck? So it's like more... You get into what you get into, and you know, I keep myself out the dumb shit as much as I can. Yeah. If I was selling drugs, I'd have been shot a motherfucker by now. Seriously speaking. Yeah. I'd have been in jail all day by now if I was where these niggas sell drugs. Excuse my language. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you see people do what they do, you, you keep yourself in your buffer zone for what, what it is you can do. I can't do that no more. I did that shit when I was young. It got me entry and exit holes in my fucking legs. And then and yeah. my arms and my shoulder. Like, I'm not going to keep, I can't put myself in there. Yeah. I'll fight. But now they can't fight. They want to rush. Yeah. Like, like, like shown earlier. Like, you know, like I said. This just happened. I see an open just cut. Just happened yesterday, a couple of days ago. Yeah. I just had to go down there and check on my brother the other day. Like I said, just from pumping gas and younger kids not having respect for an addict or a homeless person that's doing the same thing, pumping gas, talking shit. Yeah. Trying to belittle you. You being humble. Everybody don't cuss in my old head. I'm like, yo, but it's starting to shoot me. So I'm like, don't fuck me up. Yeah. You can't help but say something back. And yeah. then that's when it all kicks off. That's why I say, for a young kid, to have that kind of anger towards a, I'm 52, these guys got to be 20 or 20. If you don't yeah. have that much anger in you against an old head that's pumping gas, like really, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's really fucked up out Or for a, or a regular customer to cuss you out to the point where they tell they're going to shoot you, get from in front of the store paying them. It's fucked up out it, Isn't it safer for you to travel in a pack, though? <laughs> no, I always say to myself, I don't like yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. That's the way you get caught, that's the way you get in trouble. Yeah. Too many egos, too many decisions, too many people making choices. I could be cool, this nigga mad, this other nigga horny. Yeah, yeah. They don't know what they want to do. You know, sometimes I just sit and talk to the people that's working people. Imagine that. Our three more generations, a hundred years ago, how wicked and crazy it's going to be in the streets, unless yeah. something godly happens. Yeah. And that's all I pray for, something godly yeah. to happen to me. Unlike any other streets I've seen in my life, this is the spot. Here, walk down the corner and we'll... My friend, what is it that causes him to act like this? Fucking fentanyl. Fuck. Hey, yo! Try not to put him over like that. Huh? Try not to put him over like that. Like, when I, cause I saw some of the Jones when they showed him everybody different and moving off face. Trying to catch them in their worst. In they worst. So I'm still here on Kensington, getting into the heart. The heart of it. He says, why can't I play outside?
telling you the negative energy here on Kensington is overwhelming. Uh, unmatchable anywhere else in the world. It just feels real negative. Real raw, real dangerous. And I never say that. Feels like at any moment at all. Things could go south. The game plan is to walk down about three, four more blocks, then circle back, do the whole trip back. And hopefully my rental car is in one piece. Can't lie, it is on the back of my mind. Nice shoes, I like those shoes. I can't say too much positive. In reality, that was the most difficult walk I've ever done in my life. Not difficult because I'm scared, difficult because it's an emotional roller coaster. Seeing so many people near death, laying on the ground, not moving, addicted to drugs. Very, very, very difficult to witness firsthand. Changers, we're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, okay. and we come out here just to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus, and there's so much hurt, and you see the pain, and you see the sorrow, and you see poor choices and what it leads to, but Jesus is the hope in the midst of the in the midst of the hardship here. So we, we come down here throughout the summer, and I bring different people. This is Richard. And, Hi, Richard. Uh, yeah, so Richard uh, we're showing and I are, them the love of God. Yeah, we're going around just loving people, and we're showing them that their true identity is not in what they're doing, but it's in Christ Jesus. So and what's the feedback? The feedback is a lot of people are receptive, but some people are not. And you know what? We just keep on going one at a time, one at a time. When I first came down here, I looked and uh, it was filled. This was three years ago. It was completely, the streets were filled. You could barely walk through. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, because I used to be addicted to crack cocaine. I used to be addicted to cigarettes and gambling and drinking. And the Lord delivered me five years ago. So when I first came here, Walker 3 said, Nick, you were never at this point yeah. in, the, in the external, but on the internal, this is what you look like. And it just brought me to tears. And so I really have a heart for the lost, the broken, the hurting. And you know what? It does make a difference because three years ago, it was there was way more people than there are now. And it's not just me, but it's yeah. people coming from all over, different ministries that are down here. So yeah. uh, all glory to, to Jesus. So you're not under the belief that it's too far gone too late Absolutely. never too late no. absolutely no. not it doesn't matter how if you still have breath in your body you still have a chance you still have an opportunity the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and so that's for anybody if they have breath in them and they repent and they believe in Jesus there's a chance he'll, he'll come in and heal them and set them free absolutely every chain that used to hold me down completely free well I'll tell you what it takes a lot for you guys to get out here yeah, I've been all over the world, and I've never felt such negative energy. Yeah, just yes. a lot of negativity. It is like yeah, that man. in America now. Yeah. America has really changed. Yes. Yeah. So you've been all over, huh? 123 countries. Wow. Really? It's my first time here. Yeah. I parked down the street, and I said, "Let me go for a little walk." So is and this what you do then? You're... I travel the world. Okay, you travel, and it's like YouTube. I'm or... from Toronto. It is YouTube. Yeah. Uh, it's my passion. It was before YouTube. Yeah. I was traveling out as well. Oh, that's so awesome. Man. But I was an hour away. I've heard yeah. of Kensington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy that likes to go places nowhere else, nobody else wants to go to. Yeah, amen. That's With no mission. Yeah, no yeah. mission. Yeah. I yeah. just want to see it. And it's very unfortunate. Yeah. Very, very unfortunate. Let me ask you, when you when you decided to change, mm -hmm. what 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 was that reason? Was there a reason? 
Well, I was empty, so I, I'm a six degree black belt in Taekwondo. I owned eight martial arts schools. I'm a 10 time national gold medalist, and all my identity was in what I did. But behind yeah. the scenes, even having a big house, having money, having all this stuff, a wife of 23 years, a daughter, 17 year old daughter, I was behind the scenes and I was smoking crack in my garage when they went to bed. So I was empty on the inside. I was hurting on the inside. And I knew all about Jesus, but I really didn't know him. So I said, I said, Jesus, I know all about you. I got down on my knees. It was December 18, 2018. It was a Tuesday. At Not too long ago. Yeah, that's right. And I got on my knees. I said, Jesus, I said, I know all about you, but I don't know you. And I repent of my sins and I surrender my life to you. And at that moment, my room was filled with his glory and his presence. And I felt the most love, the most joy, the most peace. And I felt all those chains melt off of me. And from that day, I've been free. I haven't smoked a cigarette. I haven't drank a drink. And there's no way I would have been able to do that in my own strength. I, you know, I, I used to tell people it's easy to quit smoking. I've done it a thousand times, right? But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it's really, you know, it's him that, that came and gave me the power to overcome. And I've been in the word ever since. And I've seen many people healed, set free, saved, and delivered. And we wrote a book, me and my wife, called God's Prescription for Addiction. And I'll So your wife stick with you throughout all of these She did. She was times praying for me the whole time. And Amazing. she showed me. She lived for the Lord. So she was showing me what his love looked like, that even though I didn't deserve it, she should have left me. I was cheating on her. I was drinking, smoking. I was, I was a wreck. And she never left me. She, okay. she loved me when I didn't deserve it. And that's what the Lord does. He loves us when we don't deserve it. He went to the cross. It says in the Bible, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So he went to the cross. He paid the price for all the sin. All you got to do is repent and believe. And then he'll come in and give you a new spirit and a new beginning. And that doesn't mean the problems are gone. That means that you can have peace in the midst of the problems. So when the, when things go wrong, you don't yeah. go with them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, amazing. I'd like yeah. to thank you for yeah. what you're doing. I want to pray for you. What's your name? Chris. Chris. Can I pray for you? Give me your Most hand. Definitely. Father, I just thank you for... Chris, Lord, I thank you for the mission that you've sent him on, that he's been to all these countries, he's been all around the world. And Father, I thank you for what you're even doing on the inside of him, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for anything that he's carrying, any heavy weights, any burdens. You said your yoke is easy, your burden is light. You said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And Father, I just thank you that this is a mighty man of valor. This is a mighty man of you that you created on purpose, for a purpose. And I thank you, Lord, for stirring up those gifts, those things that he doesn't even know are on the inside of him as he calls out to you that they would come forth. You said in Jeremiah 33, 3, you said, call on me and I will answer and show you the great and mighty things that you know not of. And Father, anything that is in his way, the obstacles, the mountains, I command him to move now and make straight your way so that he can walk out his destiny, the destiny that you created him for, Lord. And I just thank you for your love over overwhelming him. I thank you for your joy being his strength and your peace that passes understanding upon his mind and his heart and for protection over him that he's wrapped in Psalm 91 as he travels. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, God bless you. Here. You should Do you send have me. a testimony yourself? Here you no. Go. No. no. He's still, he's still uh, not, not, not where, convinced where God's brought him yet, but he's going to bring you there. Trust yeah. me. This I'll is not by me. accident that we run across each other. Where are you from? Toronto, Canada. Yeah. You're from Canada. I'm from Wisconsin. We just pulled up here, flew in this morning, and here we go crossing paths. The middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, brother. If anybody's interested, here's his card. Nick. By far the most difficult emotional walk like this I've ever done in my life. And I've been to a lot of places. The negative energy here is overwhelming. Either direction. Drugs, drugs, drugs. I'm 
saw a young boy who looked like 16, 17, 18, shit himself. It was very sad to watch. Ambulance. Probably an overdose. People are literally looks like zombies here. Look at this park overflowing. I see some police down there on bikes. A lot of tents. It's hard to believe how did it get to this point where drugs are being sold openly and freely on the street, no consequences, and addicts are dying. I'm sure there are a dozen a day. Look like just laying on the ground with the dirt. This person on the right. I don't know what they call it when they're out of it. Like, don't even know where they are. Not walking properly. Look at this man in the wheelchair. He's out. Now, as I sit here under the bridge on Kensington, you know, coming here, my mind was set. I was going to come in, uh, record all the zombies. Um, the effects, the negative effects of drugs, easy for me. I, I, I record in most circumstances. In reality, when I saw those people near death on the ground and convulsing, and I can't as a human, I I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't record people when they're in their their possibly the last moments of life, and if not, uh, in one of their worst situations any human could ever want to be in um, first drugs I've never had had an addiction with drugs so I don't know what it feels like I have lost friends to drugs uh, and then on top of that Kensington is like literally it's hell on earth um, one more can I say it's a group of thousands of drug addicts and drug sellers all in one very saturated corner of Philadelphia there's a few police here and there, but they're not stopping anyone. As I'm walking down the street, I see needles in people's necks and their toes and their hands. Is that crime is allowed, possibly even welcomed here in Kensington, Philadelphia. So I apologize if I didn't get those zombie type videos that others have gotten. It's not, I don't have the heart for it. I was thinking about going back one more time and talking to people, but it's getting me down. I don't like I don't like to be around negative energy, and this is like latching on to me. So change of plans. I'm gonna go and find the best uh, Philly cheesesteak that I can. You know, something positive from Philadelphia. I just sat here for a sec to call my wife and my mom, and two prostitutes came up to me right away, like, "Hey, hon, you want a date?" Man, so I'm gonna, I'm leaving Kensington now, and I'm gonna find something good to eat. These are prostitutes. Just like, look at what this neighborhood looks like. Just very, very depressing. And now I'm actually on the better, I'm in the better area. So, there are some things that I film that I feel comfortable filming. 
There are some things that I don't. I've never mentioned this before, but when I was in Ukraine, uh, you know, I said I saw dead bodies. Um, I never recorded it for my video. When I was in Haiti, I saw a dead body. I did not include it in my video. I want to have fun doing this whole YouTube thing. And I want to bring you guys content. And I want to bring you to places nobody else will. Uh, but there has to be a certain level of restrictions. I, I can't let views get, get ahead of my morals. I'll put it that way. So because I feel like I've only shot half a video, I'm going to head into the center of the city if I can find out which direction that is. Um, find something good to eat. And then I have a long, I think about seven or eight hour drive home. If you haven't noticed, Damon left a couple days back. So I've been flying solo, driving solo. Enough talk. Let me get into the city and find a good Philly cheesesteak. Philadelphia. So Kensington is about 15 minutes away from the middle of the city. Kensington is also widely famous for being the number one drug area, open drug area in North America. What can I say? It is sad. Sad and bad and something needs to be done. This type of issue does not heal itself. We got Gino's steaks. Thank you. Can I get some hot sauce on it? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna give you a, I have it on the side for you. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, here we go. Pretty excited. I'm hungry. Show you guys what I'm working with. Of course, hot sauce on everything. I'm a pretty plain guy. I don't like onions, green pepper. So I got meat, cheese, and hot sauce. At this point, I give it like a 3.5 out of 5. Better than average, but missing that wow factor. That bite was a little cheesier than the rest. That, that was a, a four out of five bite. Philadelphia was very short lived. Here we got two stadiums, the Philadelphia Eagles. And over here we have the Philadelphia Phillies. It's not my first time here in Philadelphia, won't be my last, uh, but I'm anxiously anticipating getting home to see my wife and kids, which I'm excited about. It's been 15 days, long days on the road, and it catches up to me. Wow, look at those ships. You're not gonna see too much with this wide angle lens, but. Got a big bridge to cross. And unless something exciting happens on this drive, this will now be the conclusion to my Philly video. And Kensington was even worse than I had anticipated. A very, very sad place. 
Hope everybody else watching this video is happy, healthy, alive, and well. See you in the next video. Goodbye.